Your pet looks to you for a well-balanced, healthy food that's filled with ingredients that their bodies can thrive on. Finding the perfect food for your pet can certainly be overwhelming, especially when there's so many brands to choose from. If you're in a position where you can only feed your cat or dog a dry food, meaning you can't feed canned, cooked, commercial raw, or homemade raw, this video is for you. Let's go over what to look for in a good kibble brand so you can provide your pet the best you can with what you can. One of the first things you should look out for when looking for a bag of kibble is the nutritional adequacy statement. This is essentially what confirms that the food is complete and balanced and you won't have to worry about missing nutrients. There are three common ones to look out for. Growth and development, which is for the puppy and kitten life stages, adult maintenance, which is for adults, and all life stages, which can be fed to pets at any age. If you don't see any of these on the food, this means it may be missing important nutrients, which can be especially dangerous for growing puppies and kittens. Well, who establishes these so-called essential nutrients? This brings us to the next thing to look out for. Sometimes wording on the bag's label can trick you. So if the label is suggesting it's a balanced food, you need to be sure it's meeting a reputable established nutrient guideline. This is where AFCO and Feedive come in. These are organizations that have established nutritional standards for livestock and pet food. In reality, you will see many foods state that they're meeting AFCO's minimum requirements, even if they're a lower quality food. So if you wanna go a step further for your pet, look for labels stating they meet or exceed AFCO's minimum requirements. Minimum requirements mean that they're the bare minimum for the pet to live an adequate life. So a food that goes beyond these minimum requirements should still be in a safe range and is actually an ideal range according to the NRC's nutrient requirements for cats and dogs. Now that we've got these two important labeling aspects out of the way, it's time for one of the most important aspects of a food and ultimately determines how high or low the quality is. This is the ingredients. Cats are obligate carnivores. This means that their body needs to receive nutrients from animal-based foods. The same goes for dogs as well, but they do have the ability to benefit from small amounts of plant-based foods as well. The problem with kibble is that it's often very high in starchy carbohydrates like rice, wheat, corn, and legumes. These can be a great energy source for us humans, but for dogs and cats, not so much. Excess carbohydrates raise blood glucose levels and are also a major contributor to obesity in pets. Unfortunately though, carbohydrates are necessary for kibble to be extruded and shaped. When looking at the ingredients list, you want to see at least the first three being animal-based ingredients. Ingredients are listed in descending order by weight, so the first few are important to pay attention to. You may see things like chicken meal or chicken byproduct. Are these good? Well, meal is cooked down in rendered flesh, skin, and sometimes bone, and will often come in a powdered form. Byproducts can be beneficial parts like heart, brain, and kidney, but can also be poor quality parts that hold little nutrients like beaks, intestines, and feathers. Because of this, you want the bulk of the food to be the muscle meat or organ meats of the animal, as these will hold the most bioavailable nutrients that are easily absorbed. Look for things like beef or chicken, along with things like egg, liver, heart, tripe, or kidney. Did you know that there's a nutrient that's deemed essential by the NRC, but not by AFCO or FeedIF? That is EPA and DHA, also known as animal and marine-based omega-3s. Because pet food companies follow AFCO and FeedIF guidelines, many kibble brands will not have omega-3s added in. This is a major reason why dry skin and itchiness is so common in dogs and cats. So finding a food with whole fish like mackerel, salmon, sardines, herring, and anchovies will be very beneficial to your pet. If not these, then at least a fish oil of some kind. Some studies on mice have also shown that omega-3s can inhibit an enzyme that sparks inflammation in the body, which is also a contributing factor to skin issues and even pain. Remember the ingredients list? 
Don't just stop after looking to see the first three. Check the rest of the ingredients on the list as well. Many times you will see things like soybean meal, corn gluten meal, dyes, and artificial preservatives that you can't even pronounce. These are ingredients to avoid. If there are ingredients that aren't animal-based foods, it's best if they're whole foods like sweet potato, flax seeds, dark leafy greens like spinach and parsley, and fruits that contain antioxidants like blueberries. Ideally, these will take up little to no room in cat foods, but that's almost never the case with kibble. So just try to pick a food with more animal-based ingredients if you can. Many of the last ingredients you see near the end of the list are synthetic synthetic nutrients and are used to fill nutritional gaps and balance the kibble. These are fine and almost always necessary with commercial foods, but there are a few brands that use more whole foods as a nutrient source rather than relying on synthetic nutrients. Here are my top three dry food brands that I recommend and that check almost all of the boxes I just went over. At the end of the day, you just want to do the best you can with what you can. If you can only feed a lower quality dry food, there is still something you can do that's cheap and beneficial to your dog or cat. Watch these videos to find out what that is.